All right, let's review just a little bit what an internal rate of return is and talk through how one might go about calculating this quantity. So the internal rate of return is by definition a discount rate that sets the NPV of a project's cash flows equal to zero. And so in order to calculate an internal rate of return, uh, the first thing we need to do is just write down a timeline of all of a project's cash flow. So it gives us a visual representation to work with. Then uh, we want to just write down a formula for the NPV. So whatever the cash flows are, uh, write down um, in simplest terms possible the formula that will get you to the NPV. Third, set that formula, whatever it is, equal to zero. And then finally, we just want to find whatever value of R establishes that equality. Okay, so the R that sets NPV equal to zero. Now, so we have a very simple formula uh, that has what we call a closed form solution. So that is uh, a formula that we can algebraically manipulate to get to some R equals something. Then we can go uh, right ahead and plug in some numbers and uh, find IRR and be done. In other cases, this formula is gonna be much more complex and so if it's complex, we've got no closed form solution. And so what do we do? We have to solve for R by trial and error. And of course you could put in a bunch of different numbers until you get an, an, an NPV equals zero, or you could allow Microsoft Excel or your calculator to do that. But but when your, your calculator or Excel um, solves for IRR, this is essentially what it's doing, solving by trial and error. Okay, so uh, let, let's go back though to these uh, simple cases. So, so let me illustrate with a couple of uh, e examples. So here's one. Um, so this is a real estate context uh, problem. And so if we write down this timeline, uh, we see pretty quickly that this is a familiar structure. I'll write this down in thousands. So we've got a minus 838 here up front, and then series of 104s uh, forever. And so we recognize this as what? This is a perpetuity. So since this is a perpetuity, we know that uh, NPV is equal to minus 838, so that's the present value of the times zero cash flow plus the present value of all of the following cash flows. So the perpetuity is just the cash flow divided by the discount rate. And so when we set that equal to zero, we have this, and solving for R is very straightforward. That gives us an R or an IRR of 0.1278 or 12.78%. Here's another simple case that has a, an easy closed form solution. So you're gonna buy a piece of art today and then you're gonna sell it five years from now. And so you've got no intermediate cash flows at all. Instead, you just have the $10,000 purchase today and the $36,000 inflow five years from now. So what would be the NPV here? NPV here would be minus 10, it's an outflow at times zero, plus the present value of the expected inflow of 36, that occurs five years from now, so we're gonna say one plus R to the fifth. So again, it uh, takes a little bit of algebra, but we can uh, manipulate this around uh, and find a closed form solution. So setting NPV equal to zero, we have 10 equals 36 over one plus R to the fifth. Solving for R, we have 36 over 10 equals one plus R to the fifth, 
or 36 over 10. Raise that to the 1 -fifth, subtract 1, and we have the IRR, and that's 0 0.2920 or 29.2%. So that's the IRR.